Asking price sixty-eight thousand. I know family that owns that, and that's me showing off a sixty-nine ruble portrait of Vladimir Putin. That was when I was in Saint Petersburg in twenty twelve. Yeah, so folks, Oleg is a very, very valuable artist. And what I want to do is, because we have this special occasion and Oleg's here, and what Oleg, you know, and you got to be careful, but if someone buys an Oleg, uh, Jimmy, he can personalize it on the back. But you own it once you personalize it, unless your name is John. No, you still own it. Um, but... I want to show you some Oleg's because where I stand in this world in 2024, I think this is the single best artist for the money, for the dollar, dollar, dollar you can own. And when I was in St. Petersburg, Jimmy, I went into the Hermitage. And once again, this is 2011. You could do stuff in the Hermitage. They'll kill you for now. Uh, you know, one of the greatest paintings of all is called The Dance. It's done by Matisse. Robert Jolly was there. He was filming me and I touched the dance and he didn't get the shot. So I'm going, what the, you know, there's a guard over there, there, and he, Robert Jolly goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, I'm gonna touch the dance again, are you ready? And I touch it, but it came out blurred. I said, oh. so I got mad the third time. I said, you ready, you ready? And I touched it and it moved. And we got that picture. Yeah, and I blamed it on you, to the guard. <laughs> but anyway, this is what Oleg does better than anybody on the planet. He, is a, he got his master's degree from the Surikov in Moscow. He was born in Uzbekistan, which at the time, a uh, long way away from Moscow. It was a satellite country of the Russian Republic back then. And... He applied and got into the Surikov. This is everything Oleg does. Every geometrical shape, triangles, circles, squares, planes. But look at the eyes. Look at the hand gesture. He's staring right at her. And you have these grains of wheat here. This painting is entitled... Uh, golden wheat. It is 36 by 48. Now I'm going to work some deals with everybody tonight, and I'm so glad Oleg is here uh, to, to answer some questions here in a little bit. But this is a painting, uh, Jimmy. This is one of the nicest Oleg's, and I showed you different prices on art brokerage from the past. That's the past. But this is killer. You know, retail today, it's me. I don't want to get anybody mad at me. But I put 100 grand retail on this so quick, it'd be like, I, I went into uh, Ralph's the other day to buy food. And speaking of Ralph's, I got to show you this. So I asked the guy at Ralph's, where can I get a price gun? <laughs> Because they had all these markdowns. Do you have one of those, Jimmy? You know, is that how you shop? All right, hang on. Let me just get back here. I just got to show this one. <laughs> I got to show this one picture. This is my dog, Pretty Boy Floyd. Patty? Wherever I go, I'm driving to the dog park. In the back seat is Ginger. Floyd jumps up while I'm driving. This dog will not leave my sight. Yeah, that's pretty boy Floyd, all 13 pounds of them. And there's Floyd and Ginger. Oleg has met Ginger. Ginger likes Oleg. That dog is scared of everybody but Oleg. I ask him, how come the dog's not scared? I got good way with dog. And he does. Yes. Folks, everything you can see here is amazing. And I ask Oleg, what is the most important thing you learned 
at the, getting your master's degree in Moscow at the Surikov, and he said, universal beauty. He said, there are things that are beautiful, whether you're in Korea, United States, Russia, uh, Antarctica, a woman can be an Asian woman, but she can be beautiful in all those different places. There is something called universal beauty. He was talking about the movie star Elizabeth Taylor. You know, she had universal beauty. This is a perfect painting. A billion hours of work. I'm going to put this up. This is golden wheat. I'm going to give him a deal. And we're going to, we're going to work some deals. Uh, do you have the item number on? 2949? 22,000. And we're going to have some off air deals with our phone bank, but that is a beautiful painting. And how he textures all this hair is that a secret you learned at the Surikov? Like, did they make you take an oath, Oleg? Like, if you taught me how to do that, would they be after you? Yeah, come on up, come on up, yeah. Do you got a mic? Well, now he does. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, earlier than I thought, I want to give a... <laughs> now we're going to leave, Oleg. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Should I speak to yes, the speak microphone? No, yeah, yeah, just talk to me. Up. Okay. Well, okay. come on up here, Oleg. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. Yes. How come you knew how to calm my dog down? Oh, I just love dogs. I have my my own and my own some dogs. Everybody else he runs yeah. from, but you yeah. just look at him and go, eh. and he just followed well, you around. Well, I, I grew up with dogs. My father actually uh, hunter. Hunter. Mm, just a hobby. Hobby. Yeah. So you were born in Uzbekistan. Yes, yes. And that, that's like a three-day train ride to Moscow. Yes, it's about uh, maybe 2,000 miles from Moscow. Oh, wow. South to, it's a, that country has a, a border with Afghanistan. Oh, my goodness. So uh, it's a Central Asia. Yes, yes. Well, this is what they taught you a lot of this at the Surikov, right? Or yes, but... Surikov was located at the Moscow. It's a capital of Russia. Yeah. So in Moscow. When, exactly. When I when I was sixteen, seventeen, I had a dream to go to it because the most prestige, the highest school school in the world. In yeah. the, in the, no, in not in the world. In the, in the Soviet the Union. Union. Back yeah. then, it's Soviet Union. Yeah. Uh, it's like a. In Paris, it's, uh, it's in contemporary Paris or Paris, 19th century, Academy of Art. Yes, the yes. Academy of Art. Uh, exactly. It was some uh, institutions like this, even until now, 21st century, the more prestigious in, in Europe. Europe. Yes. yes. Well, you were telling me, because, and this might have been years ago, about Vasily Ivanov Surikov. How we would do these huge battle scenes and yeah. find people in the town and say, okay, you're going to be a dead soldier. You lay right there. Don't move. You do a good job. You come back tomorrow. So he would paint. The, 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 the school is named after Surikov. He would paint these huge canvases, right? Well, he already was very famous at the late 19th century. Okay. It's why uh, they created the Academy. And, and name it after him. Yes, yes. Well, so this is that some is that easy to do or does that take a little time? Well, actually, the techniques it's not so difficult. Okay. It's almost like a, some females use it for pancakes, or 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 squeeze it uh, some special dough. Oh, oh, on top oh, of oh like a like a spoon, yeah. No, no, no. A special uh, mixed 
on the cakes. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like a birthday cake. Yeah, when you do do the icing. Exactly, icing. But it's pretty much the same idea. But, of course, I, I don't use it uh, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I use it special <laughs> gold acrylic. Uh, but the technique, pretty much the same. What what is What would have been, if you could look back before you went to the Surikov or... What would have been the hardest part of this painting? Oh, the faces. The faces? Yes. The faces and hands, because I want to, I, I would like to create the realistic gesture. And the, the eyes, uh, how they look, it's, it's a lot of psychiatry inside. Yes. I, I have to create uh, faces um, to... to to enrich the painting, yes. yes, enrich the painting with with uh, with something, uh, some uh, thoughtful, thoughtful, oh, yes. thoughtful eyes, thoughtful well, faces. Well, no, and well, let me ask you about this one, Oleg, uh, because there's and Jimmy, if you can grab this one right here. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah. Oh, Jimmy. You want me to help you? Oh, Jimmy's. Jimmy's got it. This one, you got a face and a face. Yes. This is called Love Story. Exactly. Now, this girl is kind of looking away, but who are these two guys? Well, I guess the story is very simple. Probably she's in love with that gentleman. Okay. And that gentleman turned to different female oh. here, and see they inside the heart. Oh. It's a symbolism, sim so symbol of. She likes him, but uh, he exactly. likes this it's girl. That's why she's a little bit uh, upset. She's upset. Uh, yes, she's she's upset, and she's probably remember the best times she had with that guy. Ah. It's simple story, but it's and so she uh, likes uh, him. But he likes her. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now the rose is and uh, it's like a reminder uh, the, of the love it used exactly. to be. Yes. Now this texturing is that something that they at the Surikov? Did they have classes in that? No, no I, 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 this is my, it's not my invention, but it's uh, I use it to enrich the background. Yeah, to enrich it. Yeah. And uh, what is this right here? It's like a little bit of silver in there? Decoration. I use it dark uh, bronze. Okay. Dark bronze uh, acrylic. And I am going to be conservative because only... I, I look at art brokers, I look at other places, I'd say this is a $100,000 painting, but I'm going to put this up tonight at a price of 19000 But we'll work some deals. 19000 on Love Story. All right, Jimmy, you can move. Oh, yeah, I want to put this one up, and it might be because Oleg, did you ever see a Burt Reynolds film? What was it called, Jimmy, with the banjos? Deliverance. Deliverance. Did you ever see that movie called Deliverance? Where they went on a canoe trip, <laughs> and uh, this is this is called banjo player, and it is thirty-two and a half by forty-four. Something went awry on this whitewater trip, and there was a kid that could play the guitar, uh, the banjo, really well. Now, what is hard? What what are you suggesting with this face? What is what is going on here, Oli? Well, lady enjoyed the the song, some kind of music, maybe country music, and she have admirers. I guess she have uh, some people. See that guy? He uh, love her maybe more than the music. So even even he has a gesture to his head. 
<laughs> He's got a what? Uh, his gesture with that uh, right hand. arm, uh, his right uh, uh, hand, yes. To, oh my God, he like it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> he like her, yeah. And who is this? Oh, it's probably other, this re represent uh, some other people, some audience. Audience, I yeah. got you. Now you use so many geometrical shapes. Planes, squares, rectangles, triangles, circles, squares. Is that something, what did you decide to paint like that? Well, because I like that, uh, I saw some, sometimes, let's say I paint completely realistic picture without, without all the geometric shapes. Yes. I think it's going to be a little boring. Boring, yes. Boring. So when I create all the shapes, it's, I don't know, for me it's more fun. Yes. More fun for the eyes, more fun for for uh, my brain, I guess. I don't Hell know. no, for people that buy it too. Yeah, well, this is 32 and a half by 44. I'm going to price this for a night at... Twenty-eight thousand. I'm. We're gonna work some deals, but that's cheap because I personally, Jimmy, I don't want to get old like Matt. I think it's over a hundred thousand dollars, but that's just me. That's just me. And if he runs at me, you trip him. Oh sure, Jimmy. Yeah. All right. Now I want to put this one up because I cannot explain this painting as well as you, Oleg. Oh, come on. Let me help you. Yeah. In the eighties. My dad had a painting in his office. My dad would never hang it. It was by an artist named Gabor Petterby, who went on to become very famous before he died. And people asked my dad, why don't you hang it? And it was a rather depressing painting. He says, I only hang it when I get too happy. <laughs> this seems to be a dark painting. What's going on in this story, Oleg? Because it looks like, what's happening? I love it. I like it, but it looks like, what's happening here? Nothing happened. <laughs> that that uh, two people related in some way, maybe as their brothers, or maybe uh, cousins, or maybe, well, th you can see they're related. Okay. And they have same both memory about their own house. Oh, okay. It's uh, we we can call it like family house. Family house. And well, it's a little. It's a different name. It's a appreciation. Yeah. Appreciation. Yes. yes. But she, the story in that painting, they both have a mutual mutual memory about that little house. But it, does she look sad, or is he not sad? Well, it's it's how you... She's not really upset. She's in a deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. Deep memory. Okay. And uh, see, when you laugh all the time, you you can be... looks like a fool. But when you start thinking about something what's touch you, what's serious for you... Yeah. I don't think you're going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And so it's, uh, she's not really upset. She's just uh, in the process of remember. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm going to move this over, Jimmy. Now, I got to tell you, you Oleg, this is one of my favorite paintings you ever painted here. This is something. They all are, but this is desire two nine five seven you got geometrical shapes you got a face in a face what does that face in a face mean it means she's penetrated his mind so deep she's already so already like living inside him oh so she 
has, has penetrated. So penetration by thoughts. That she's already living inside of him. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's it's like a, 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 her reflection inside him already, inside his brain. And folks, and I want to, uh, if anybody buys an Oleg tonight, if you want, Oleg can personalize it, but you can't return it. I mean, you know, but uh, don't ever personalize art. But if you like it and you, it's a gift, he can sign it on the back, even though he signed it on the front, signed it on the back. And this is, I would have this up for 17000 a night, but I, I've got a lot of special pricing to tell you all about. All right, let me show you one more right here. What's going on here, Oleg? What is this story about? Well, it's uh, my usual subject. It's a relationship between male and female. Okay. So the male, look, look at him. He have a house on top of his head. Okay. He have all that, uh, again, geometrical stuff around him. Okay. Look at his, his very, very... Man's like a uh, face. Okay. And <clears throat> it's probably what's attractive her, to her because you, you can see for sure he's a strong, um, rich, probably wealthy man. Look at his face. Okay. And he has no doubts about anything. Okay, he's sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he's probably already a millionaire. <laughs> okay, he's already a millionaire. <laughs> and... Look at her. She's much more tender, much more um, female-like. Yes. Much more. And she's, she's laying over there and she's thinking, mm, it's very interesting. Look at you. Let me touch you. <laughs> and and may, maybe I would like it. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is entitled The Admirer. So she... He is admiring her, or is she? Are they mutual? Uh, well, he, for sure, if he is uh, admire her, she start to be interesting too a little bit. Oh, yeah. so she's going okay. Yeah, I might like this guy. Yeah, this is two nine five six, eighteen thousand a night. It is a. These are this is an original oil on board. Yes, it's a board, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jimmy, you could even... I only got two more to show. Then I got three over there. But, yeah, look at this. Now, you got to explain this one to me. Because there's a face and a face. Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a usual classical story about Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, okay. Exactly. But you're not supposed to grab that apple. Well. That's what caused all the problems it's in the why, it's, Bible. It's, exactly. It's why the man tried to stop her gesture, try, try to stop her to grab that apple. Don't grab that apple, Eve. Exactly. Yes. Because he's probably uh, more obedient to the highest power than her. And she's uh, as a, she's very very um, interested in that fruit. So so he's trying to Adam's trying exactly. to stop Eve exactly from grabbing the apple. Yes, in the Garden of Eden. Exactly. But he didn't try hard enough because that's how all hell broke loose. Exactly, exactly. So the it's a classical story from Bible. Yeah. Adam and Eve and the apple. Yeah, it was Juliana's fault. She was yelling at her, grab that apple, Eve. No. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and you have all this, oh, this is beautiful. Now, the face in the face, what is that telling you? Oh, it's just a combination of the faces all together because I try show them in one spot, uh, two faces. In one spot? Yeah, in one spot, yeah. <laughs> 
And I uh, got gotcha. you. So continuing his. Well, I, uh, Jimmy, there are three others right here. And then I have shown all the old leagues. And I am going to open this up. Patty, are you ready? Go. All right. Now, I like Adam and Eve. Eve and the apple. You can put it right on top of here. Oh, There's okay. The same, same size, pretty much. Yeah. 2958 Friends. Well, this is just the two females. Uh, I, I guess they both have some kind of uh, thinking, thinking in their faces, expression of thoughts. Thoughts? Ex exactly, expression of memories. But that girl have some... Plant. Plant. So it's like a symbol of her fertility, probably. Uh, she can grow up that plant, or kids, or yeah. family. Oh, it's a, it's, a, yeah. it's a more symbolism in that painting. Do those gold balls, what, what does that mean? Is that... Well, I guess she's probably more important than that girl. That's <laughs> why she has that uh, little crown. Yeah. Well, this is beautiful. And this is called... Uh... No, this is, oh, yeah, 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 I was going, yeah. this is Friends, and that's oil on paper. Yes. All right, now this one, I need you to explain the color on this one. This is 2959. What's that? Why is she blue? Because she's in the shadow. She, oh, she's, she's in... like a, a be, behind the window. Or in another room. It's why she's in a dark spot, but same time we can see her. So you got a face in a face in a face, and why is she kind of pouting? What's going on here? That girl in the back approached that girl. Okay. And probably she's asking her some question. And Probably that girl right behind them and in the other room have some kind of answers. That's it. It's, it's a, Yeah, and this pattern work. Wow, yeah. Well, yeah, it's a lot of decoration around because I love to some, spend the time sometimes just uh, go decorative on the paintings. Well, you got a great title, Reflections. Yes. Reflections, and then the last one. Right here, this is cool, the touch. Well, I got to be careful who's touching who in this painting, Oleg. Well, that lady tried to touch that man. Ah. And that guy tried to stop him. Okay. And what's the face in a face mean in this? Same like in another painting. They're already almost together. Not almost, but for sure together. And she cannot touch something what she's not supposed to. Oh, she's not supposed to touch it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, okay. And all the geometrical sh shapes and s symbols there. This is fantastic. How old are you now, Oli? I'm 60. 60? <laughs> yes, 60. Yeah. I'm lucky I get 60. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm older than you, man. He's ancient. What we do with him is we freeze him cryogenically and bring him out every now and then. I know, it's all BS. I know you can't freeze anybody. Well, Oleg, give me a, take a break, and I'm going to sp spend a few minutes and sell some of this art. Okay, okay. If you have any questions, just call me. I'm going to, yeah. yeah. And if anybody buys anything and you want Oleg to put something on the back, we have Sharpies here. But I got to start with this painting right here. This. Patty, I have a price in mind for this. And I've been on TV now. For 33 years. You know, June 21st, I'll start my 34th year. 
And yeah, this is golden wheat. I think this is the king of the paintings I have gotten from Oleg in a decade. Now I had this up at, what did I have this up for? 20 what? 22,000. I got a price in mind. And Ashley, when I tell you this price, do not say it out loud or re overreact because it's too cheap. And folks, other I know we're on direct TV now and live streaming, but Dish joins us an hour. This is going to be the painting of the night, but I'm going to walk over here, try not to freak out, show them that painting. This is what I'm thinking if they call you up. This is, you got to call the phone bank. Is that cheap or what? This is a $100,000 rolling in my mind. Give us a call. I just gave Patty a price so cheap that it, it you cannot imagine it's selling that cheap. And you know we got I got Gregory Wilhelmes, I got some Agilets, got all kinds of stuff. But this is the painting of the night. Please call us. It's not twenty-two thousand. It's not fifteen thousand. It is so unbelievably cheap. You need to call. It is beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's 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 large, and it is stunning. And then right below it is twenty-nine fifty-one. I'm gonna put that right there. Yeah, there we go. Now this is a banjo player. And as Oleg explained, there are so many meanings and meanings going on in this painting. It is absolutely stunning. Patty, I got a price you're not gonna believe. Oh yeah, that's gonna be next too, yeah. All right, Patty, on this one, don't fall out of your seat. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. Give you the secret code. Get close, folks. Call me up. Let me show this last one and call because I got all kinds of stuff tonight. I have, you know, we got all kinds. I'm going to hold this. He explained the blue girl in it. No, no, this is a different one. This is the one where she's thinking of him and he's thinking of her. Somebody else is her. Has that ever happened to you, Jimmy? Story of your life. This is 2948. We had this up for like 27,000. Call me. It's going to be so unbelievable. You got to call. I'm going to have to tell somebody a price right now. Now, folks, can you hold this for a second? If uh, camera two or whichever camera Wilson's on, if you ever wanted a deal and a half, a deal of a deal of a deal, this one, the golden wheat right here, I gave Patty a price that's so cheap, it's not going to be available when all of our affiliates are on. That is golden wheat. Call me up. I think it's worth over $100,000. That is one of the greatest original Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. The, the, it, it's amazing. Call me up because I gave Patty a price so cheap that if I can't believe they haven't even called to ask. Susan, you need this. Barbara, you need this. Mr. Z. Mr. K, Mr. M, that is could be the crown of your collection right there. You can see, you walk into this studio, you see that painting, you go, unbelievable. So anyway, call me up and uh, see what happens. Hang on, I got to, oh, here, let me hand this to you. I got I forgot the most important thing. Right here. 
All right. I think it's too good of a deal. I just want to make sure the phones were working. Patty, I can't believe nobody's bought this one. I might buy this from Jack. I might just buy this. This is one of the greatest openings I have ever seen in the last 20 years. I've known him for 18 years now. Which one do they want? Because this is a deal of a lifetime. I could put the price up there, but I can't. It's it's too cheap. Which one are they calling on? Okay, you you okay, we'll get them registered. Yeah, it's hard not to, to knock the art around, isn't it? Okay. Now here's one I haven't shown. This painting reminds me of you, Jimmy. Uh, actually, I'm just going to put it right here. It is Happy Family 2950. I don't want it to touch. Good. You know what that baby is, Jimmy? That baby is you. The red-headed stepchild. No, I <laughs> didn't. Okay. Now... And we're on direct TV, right? We're on direct TV and we are live streaming. And live streaming. All right. Hang on, Jimmy. I know it's too early to plead, but that's why we're not selling. I'm so ugly. Look at that, Jimmy. I'd be scared to call that man. Mommy, mommy, there's a strange man on TV. No, I'm not strange. I have been selling art and, and coins on TV. I'm in my 33rd year. June 21st, I'll finish 33 years and start my 34th year. I'm telling you, these paintings that I have picked here are some of the best ever. And I have, I have offered them, I cannot tell you, they are such an amazing price. I can't even put them on the screen. If you just call, you will be able to get, and I believe Oleg is one of the few artists that will transcend time. Oleg's not only because of inflation and this, his take on Russian Romanticism, his understanding of technique from the hardest college in Europe at the time, the, the Surikov, I got prices you won't believe. So I'm going to give it about a minute and then I might move on to some Gregory will help me for a brief minute or two or a little longer. What, what, what are they saying? And I proved the phones still work. Has Susan called? Because last week we sold her painting. Oh, Susan, I got a deal for you. All right. Well, what I'm going to do right now, Jimmy, I got to put the show piece back here. That is so amazing. I liked Oleg's description. I don't know if Melvin's bought any. He loves Oleg's work. Let's see if we can put that. Yeah, right where that bridge is. What city do you think that is? I think it's France because of the flag. Yeah, would you like it? The pop? Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move over for a second. 
uh, on, and I'm going to show you some Gregory Wilhelmi's work. Please call. These are so unbelievably priced. It's 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 unbelievable. But uh, I want to I want to introduce an artist, and we got Oleg here in the studio. We're going to be talking about him, especially after seven when Dish and some other affiliates join us. But uh, Matt, can you play well? Help me too. Gregory will help me. I call him my cowboy artist. He lives in Roundup, Montana, and he has become a museum artist and everything else. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back with you. I live in Montana and I'm an artist. And I paint pictures, a lot of pictures, of a lot of different things in a lot of different places. The hardest part of doing any painting is getting it started and after you get a certain place with it then it kind of starts to fall together on its own and it's easier to deal with. But when you're first starting it you have to concentrate more to know for sure in your own mind what it is that you need to do to get a good product, a good picture. One of the problems about working outside is that it takes forever for oil paint to dry. So by adding some dryer into the white paint, that uh, allows me to get a better, faster drying time and to uh, have an easier time of completing my painting. I use a medium that I specially mix up for outdoor use, get some dryer in it. And I, uh, after I have completed a preliminary, preliminary sketch of what it is that the main things that I want to paint, and I put on brush light coating of this medium over the entire surface. It helps the uh, oil paint spread more evenly. And I also, um, I prefer a warm sienna tone to put my paint onto it. Uh, just as a personal preference is that, first of all, I hate to work just on a stark white canvas because the oil paint will leave, leave holes in your painting that the white will show through. And uh, I always prefer a warm surface to paint on because it warms the other colors that I put over the top of it. Anytime that you're painting outside, you're dealing with uh, weather, sunlight, time. Within 90 minutes, you have basically 90 minutes to get down uh, your study because after that, the light will have changed significantly enough that you have a totally different picture that you're working with. If you're painting in town, there's always the, uh, you try to get out of the way out of, out of the, on a side street where the traffic's not heavy and where you don't have a lot of interruptions. And then there's the elements. Like this morning, it was only about 30 degrees when we first got, came out here. I was pretty sure of that. So there's the cold and some of there's the heat. It's the bugs, the wind, the rain. <laughs> and just the logistics of setting up. So one of the more important aspects and the reasons to work outside is that it allows the artist to develop a visual memory for color and value and tone. I paint inside more than what I used to, but you still need to get out in the field and work because the human eye sees so much different than the camera and uh, it's also the immediacy of the of seeing the scene and working with it. And nothing as compelling as visually as uh, coming out actually seeing the scene and, uh, and the challenge of being able to paint it. Setting up uh, like this is, gives you the best kind of information to go back to the studio and do a finished painting. So when you're back in your studio and you're working and you're looking at uh, reference material, say it's photographs you've taken or drawings that you've done, and the painting isn't working right, uh, this kind of outdoor experience gives you the kind of knowledge you need to go back and make it right.
my favorite places when I first started painting out, outside location I had taken a trip to Germany and uh, anytime that you're painting outside you attract more of an audience and uh, to give me courage to get out because there was always be a crowd watching is that I you could buy beer in Germany by the uh, by the quartz, the, the bottle of beer was the, the kilo thing or whatever it was. So I, and, and it was very acceptable to have beer for breakfast in Germany, so I put a couple of those big bottles in my backpack. and I worked in watercolors mostly then. And so you could sit down almost any street corner and get out your beer and get out your watercolors and uh, do a painting, have a crowd, have a conversation. Uh, person's reaction to your work is uh, sometimes surprising to me. You know, that they'll get things out of something that I, uh, I necessarily wasn't intending or uh, even thinking about. So I think basically I just I do my work and then whatever a viewer drags away from it or how they respond to it. And one thing I've learned over the years is that, uh, that you really can't uh, predict it. <laughs> a lot of times paintings that I really like, 80% uh, of people will, will just, uh, and I'll expect people to respond the same way to something that I really like, and it, it seldom ever happens. <laughs> when I came down here, it was a Sunday morning a few days ago, and I was looking for a location to, for us to paint on, and I was, uh, what captured me, my eye was, uh, the light source. It was. We were, I was down here around 8:30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and uh, it was quiet. And uh, there was just nice contrast between the darks and the light area. And so the, this focal area in here really stood out. This popped. I liked the way that at that morning, where the cerulean blue sky was a nice complement off the oranges and the warm tones in here. It all looks good to me right now. I'll put it in my studio for a few days and look at it, and uh, maybe some things will come to me that, uh, that I can add or change at the time. But right now, it feels good. Being done with something like, and, be, and having the painting being finished, I think are two different things. What I can say for sure right now is I'm about done with this painting. All in all, I think it turned out to be a very nice piece. I think it's kind of captivating. Hi folks, Barry Chappell back with you. That was just one quick look at Gregory Wilhelmy. I call him my cowboy artist. He's a young 79, almost 80, and I talked to him on the phone a couple days ago. This is what Gregory paints. He loves the West, but what he loves is what happens in the West. What happens when a big uh, company moves in to open a mine and then they mine it and then they have to shut the mine down 20 years later. What happens to that town? Well, this was a place in his, near his hometown. Town. This is called the Western Wheel. He painted this in 2018. The Western Wheel on the south side of Billings was the local rally point for bikers. The colorful landmark had a reputation and, and after many years, it closed down. Bikers and beers on a hot summer day. I did this painting in, mem in memory of rowdy times and place. And this fits into Gregory. This is what 20 years ago, if you had come to Billings, Montana on a Saturday, you would have seen all these bikers getting drunk on a hot Saturday afternoon, a few flight fights. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's either the Nicolaisen Art Museum or the, um, let me just give you a couple of the names. He is a museum painter, the Yellowstone Art Museum. This is one of the shows he did at the Yellowstone Art Museum. It was called A Matter of Time. And when you drive into Billings, Montana, 
This was like the road runner there, Jimmy. That is Gregory Wilhelmy painting a building on a building. So when you pull up there, you're going, is that a building? Is that a road? What is that? And that's the, the Billings, Montana commissioned that piece. And that's a picture of him painting it. This is a well-known piece. And what Gregory does, um, for example, this was him talking at uh, the Long Road at the Yellowstone Art Museum, giving a talk to people about his work and why he painted it. This is a very, very valuable painting. This, uh, it's, it, you're talking about a museum artist that has been in the Yellowstone, the, the Bismarck, the South Dakota Museum of Art, uh, the Nicolaisen Art Museum. He's been in them all, but I'll tell you what, retail, this is probably 45,000 minimum. And this is, you have the item number, it's called the wheel. It's called Afternoon at the Wheel. Let's see what the item number is. What is it? 2988. Now, folks, this is a $45,000, $50,000 work of art, and it's a perfect painting. And Gregory is, uh, a lot of his paintings are open air painting where he just sets up and starts painting. Tell you what I can do on this. On this piece, oh, you're going to have a deal of a lifetime. $3,500 to open, Jimmy. That took so long to paint, and you got a piece of history there. Legendary artist Gregory Wilhelmy. Uh, $200. Hello, Dish Network. Not yet. Not yet. I'm two minutes early for Dish Network. So you guys can steal this before Dish Network even gets a chance, Patty? And you let me do that? I know Susan bought a Wilhelmy that was amazing. And this is Gregory Wilhelmy. They, uh, a town, the Yellowstone Art Museum, no, a town commissioned this picture of steers. And there he is on a lift to paint that on the side of a building. And that's Gregory way up there. He gets a lot of commission work. And he has painted some. Here was his show at the Nicolaus Nicolaisen Art Museum in Casper, Wyoming, showing what's left of some of the towns that were heydays 20 years before. Now they're just a lot of empty buildings and a few businesses and a couple bars. That's what Gregory Wilhelmy found interesting to show what comes next. Hello, Dish Network. Am I on Dish now? Hello, Dish Network. I just showed a uh, quick little docudrama on Gregory Wilhelmy, and I have Oleg in studio with me tonight. We got all kinds of stuff going on, and I'm gonna, we're gonna, and Jimmy's helping me. Jimmy is uh, helping move everything around, help me sell art, and Jimmy got some. Very important economic lessons from Oleg Javetin, who is here tonight helping. Now I'm going to bring him on stage again in a little bit. So this is a major work by Gregory Wilhelmy, and I put it down so cheap. What I got that at? 3500 Dobin? That's cheap. 
and give me a call if you're interested. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this, Jimmy, and I'm going to put this painting up next, uh, right here. And I'm going to, yeah, have Oli come back for a second. Oli, for all of our viewers, half of our, view, our viewers on DirecTV saw Oleg talk about this, but our viewers on DISH haven't. Now, folks, this is an amazing Oleg Javetin, master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow. It's 48 by 36. It's called Love Story. And I'm going to sell this painting right now. And I got a price so cheap, it's going to, ah, Patty, you get ready. This lady, this beautiful lady, and you created all the hair, the decorative silver here, the, the carnation, the rose. What is going on? Because she's looking this way, Oleg. She's looking away. But what's going on in her mind? Well, this is the heart. If you see the shape, it's a heart. Yes. Yes. It's symbol of love. So this is not... A, realistic painting it doesn't happen in some other room yes but mostly it's inside her mind this is her thoughts about that situ whole situation and her thoughts are about this guy exactly. that she likes but the guy she likes likes this girl exactly so it's a classical love triangle a classical love triangle exactly yeah. so most of my paintings last 30 years, it's, it's about relationship between male and female. Yes. Some family values, some very conservative yes. stuff. But same time, we live in 21st century, so I try to create modernistic, modernistic design. Well, how do these look? That could get violent, I like these love triangles. Well, look at the whole s classical stories. Uh, Romeo and Juliet by Sh William Shakespeare. Yes. And from that time, 500 years ago, even until now, this is the most important stuff in human being lives. Okay, yes. So, it's the uh, most important. It's, uh, it's our life, actually. Gotcha. Well... This painting, I believe, because Oleg is a master graduate of the Surikov in Moscow, and which, who is it? This is stunning. I value this at over 100 grand, but I'm not going to charge anywhere near that. Patty, if they want to if they want to buy this, just buy this outright right now. It's signed on the front. It's signed on the back. Oh, this is gorgeous too. It so this is a classical man, woman. This is this has been going on since Adam and Eve. Exactly. Yes. Love triangular. All right. Well, hang on. Uh, Patty, do we need a price on this or? Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to move this over till I sell this one painting right here. This painting is selling right now. Oh, I let did me, it. Let me help you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I sort of did it. Folks, Barry Chapel coming to you live in Hollywood, California at the Primetime Shopping Network oh, Studios. Yeah. It's okay. This painting here I got it, I got is the single greatest Oleg I have seen in many, many years. And whoever gets this, uh, I will put that in writing. This is one of the greatest Olegs. This right here is entitled Golden Wheat. Now, Oleg, what is going on? Because he's looking at her. Well, you have the hand gestures. 
that gentleman approach that females and she's in a stage in a, she, she's not sure she's not sure she, she like him and same time she's probably asking more time to think to think okay uh, and uh, she's on a gesture of like she's love to dance she almost dancing we can call the painting love dancing or dancing of love yeah golden wheat is exactly good too. So does the wheat symbolize a family? Fertilities. Fertilities, yes. Exactly. This is the bread. This is the what we, our life depends. Yes. And this is probably two farmers, whatever. It's not the issue. The issue is continue of life, continue of the generation by generation. It's, it's why I put that uh, wheat here. Yes. Well, we are as a human beings. We used grains and life probably last ten thousand years or more. Yeah, yeah. Well, folks. Oh, look at that! Good camera work, Wilson. Yeah, he's still trying to get Tom Hanks. You ever see that movie Castaway? Oh yes. Where he had the ball, Wilson. Yes. He let Wilson float away. That's Wilson, the cameraman. He just. Let you float away, Wilson. I know he acted like, Wilson, ah, that's close enough. I'm getting out of here. No, I don't know. But here's what I want to do, folks. I am giving Patty a price on this painting. And I want you to see in the light how beautiful this painting is. Now, this is an off-the-air sale. You got a call right now. I think this is one of the best paintings. I love all of Oleg's work. I've been working with him for over 18 years. I have a picture from the first time I ever met him. Collector's Editions kept telling me you were in Moscow. And I said, no, and they finally tracked you down. Yeah, December 4th, 2006 is when I met Oleg and started buying paintings from him. Yeah, so 06, 26 would be 20, 24, 2004, 18 years. And here's Patty. Mm -hmm. To me, this is, and, and Wilson, I don't know if you can lift the shot up. I think this is one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. I think this painting is, in, I, I think it's going to do very, very well. Now, you're in touch because you, you have both an American passport and Russian passport. Well, yes, but I live in the United States 34 years. 34 years. 34 years. I came here actually. Uh, American Russian uh, uh, company, mostly American company, invite me to work here. Collectors editions. No, no, different company, okay. different gallery. In Laguna Beach, it was called Rozovsky Gallery, and I start over there when I was 26 years old. Oh wow! Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well. The, Time happened so fast, so now I'm 60. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> still working here. I'm glad I, you I, are. I, I came here in the United States when was relationship between two governments, Russian and American, very friendly. Yeah. Not now. Now no, it's... No, no, no. I'm upsetting myself. It's like I came when was Mr. Gorbachev in power. Yeah. And they was together friends with Mr. Reagan. Yes. And yeah. they... They create mutual disarmament yes. of nuclear nuclear missiles. And when you came here, you came on like an E four. You had to learn English. You had to take oh test, yes yes tests exactly. on American history. Well, well, here when I came, I speak no language at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, well, I was lucky. I, I start work pretty much successful here here in the states well you know i started i came on tv i was 29 29 yeah. i've been doing it since i was 29 i was a teacher at that time assistant professor of economics oh economics yes. yeah and uh had a bachelor's and a master's and i and i've been selling on tv ever since gave up tenure to do this but here's what i can do folks 
wherever you're watching me. And if you want Oleg to sign something on the back, he is here. This, in my humble opinion, is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen. And Oleg, I think if you move over here, because the light, I think, let, let's see. Can you stand right over here? Because watch, yeah, now the light's hitting it, you see? There we go. This is one of the all-time greats. I got a price so cheap I can't even put it on the air. Now I'm going to walk over here. Don't fall off this. I haven't yet. I've come close. I think Jimmy pushed me off once. I don't mind. I, mean, I Patty, I have a price so cheap. This, at my old, at my old business, I wouldn't have sold this for less than... I would have picked the right time. It would have gone for fourteen to seventeen thousand by auction. That was then. I got Oleg here right now. We have a sharpie if you want anything on the back. At ten thousand, that would have been gone so fast. I could have got auction houses. I could have put it on Heritage. I could have put it on Sotheby's. I could have put it so many places. But I am gonna. I'm talking even less than that. I'm talking less. Then 8,000. I'm talking less than seven. Take a look at this. First person, this is to own it, not auction. First person says yes. I cannot, it is so cheap. It's called a proxy, I believe. When it's so cheap, you can't say it, Jimmy. Is that a graphia or no, a proxy? When you can't, a graphia is when you can't write it down. It's so cheap, I can't write it down or say it. It's a proxy and a graphia. I'll tell you what. This is how cheap. Now, don't pass out. You got something to get her when I show her this price. Are you ready? Okay. All right. And they own it. Okay. it I, can't even, I can't even say it. Now don't you, you repeat that. Don't, don't repeat that. I don't have a mic <laughs> you don't have a mic. And if you repeated it, I'd have to hit you below the belt. And if you go, why did you do that, Barry? No. I just gave Patty. It's less than 10 grand. It's less than nine. It's less than eight. You got to get online. That is the single greatest Oleg. You painted a painting for me that I hung in my house. It was called the Three Graces. Yes. Yes. It's a lot of sex. It was, yeah, it was pretty big, and I framed it, and my kids grew up by that painting. They loved it. And I brought it on TV, and I started the auction. At, at 5000 it sold for 29000 This is just as good. Well, I believe it's uh, going to be even more expensive this time. Yes. 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 And this, at the price, if you don't call to get Patty's price, it's less than $6,000 to open. All right. I try. And I'm off. You don't text Susan, do you? No, but I can Yeah, tell her tell her that price she needs to own this. Susan, if you're watching, I got a painting for you. And I just wanted to show this because this is one of the greatest Oleg's I have ever seen. And folks, I never compete with customers. A coin dealer in Stockton, California, Bob Hallam. Do you know Bob Hallam? He told me 20, uh, 33 years ago, never compete with your customers. Because he gave me a coin. I said, I might buy this. Bob says, don't buy it. Never compete with your customers. So I never have. I'm telling you, if this doesn't sell tonight, I am buying this right now tonight from Jack. So I gave Ashley, uh, Ashley, Patty, Patty, sorry, Patty. I gave Patty a price that is so cheap, uh, it's either you or me. So take a look at it. And I am going to move this over. All right. Patty, what do you think would happen if I just started an auction? I don't know. I'm scared. It's your call, Patty. This one, I think, is one of the great ones. Look at this. Desires. Hidden. No, yeah, Hidden Desires. I'm not sure. This is tight. 
Look at this. I was just calling you. That was me. 2957. I'll put it on layaway. She needs to own that painting. At that price, it is gold. And if you want Oleg to write anything on the back, you know you have in Russian they have ten vowels. In Amer in English you only have a e i o u occasionally. What you have six. In Russia, you got ten vowels. You know, a vowel, a vowel, a e i o u. It makes how oh. what? <laughs> and what does she say? Because I want her to get that painting. No, no, just here. Okay. Well, here is one that is smaller. It's twenty-one by twenty-four. It's called Hidden Desires. What's happening in this painting, Oleg? Uh, <coughs> well, <coughs> it's the same, uh, same as my, my style, my my thoughts about it's about relationship between female and, and a male. Uh, so all that abstract painting around them represent. Contemporary, contemporary design, and the faces I try paint in a classical way, in a classical maybe a Renaissance way. It's a mix of styles. It's why why it's attractive to me. Well, it's it's up to people to decide it. But this is my style. It's what I paint. What I what I like. I can answer the question if she wants to like. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I... Okay, well, hang on, Susan. I've got I to get back on stage. <laughs> uh... I got a price on this. You got the face in face. First person that wants to open this, Patty, 3200 Right now. 3200 on Hidden Desire. That's an original oil on canvas by Oleg Javetin. Jimmy, where are the coins? Somebody steal them? I know. Did that happen? I think it was you. No, I didn't. I'm not that. I can't. I heard the jingling. <laughs> That's, uh, damn, you caught me. <laughs> So anybody wants to get in on this 3200 and I'll tell you what I am Let me think uh, Have we shown this one lately uh, like prices in the last Okay um Only which of all of these is your favorite uh, my favorite probably uh, I don't know, probably this one. Do you like this one? Yep. All right, let's put it up here. This is Oleg's favorite painting. In, in the Z local collection. In this collection, yeah, yeah. yes. For t tonight, that one, probably my favorite. Uh, why? I tell you why. Because it's not so bright and it's not so happy like other paintings. But it's a little bit deeper. It has some deep psychological stuff going on. Um, maybe that two people related to each other. And one person holding that old house, oh, old, wow. almost broken Russian house, and uh, his or her hand, and they both 
probably have some kind of memory about that house. Yeah. It's, 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 it's sometimes when I remember house of my grandfather. Nostalgia. Exactly, exactly. Nostalgia. Yeah, yeah it's a good name actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it's probably exactly nostalgia. Well, mm -hmm. it's, it has different name, but yes. you got the the point. Yeah. It's called appreciation. Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh. It's not again. It's not so bright. It's not so happy, and uh, and um, it's a little bit darker. But it's much deeper, much more thoughtful. Well, tell you what, um, I am going to put. Uh, let me try one more here. Which one would you go with? Jimmy, I this should have been bam, and I got a price so cheap, Patty. If somebody calls on this, I, I'll give you the price, but they can't tell anybody what what price I gave them. And Jimmy, I'm gonna buy that tonight from Oleg. I'm gonna take out my checkbook. I'm gonna buy it from Oleg and supersede Jack. <laughs> All right, All right, let me show one more. The banjo player. I was 18 years old, Jimmy, a freshman at South Georgia College in Douglas, Georgia, where I saw the movie Deliverance. Oh, my goodness. Ned Beatty. It was a comedy, wasn't it? <laughs> Squeal like a pig, though. No. Uh, I get you the movie. Uh, it's Burt Reynolds. They're taking a commuting trip, and they run into some real... John Boyd. <laughs> some... John Boyd was in it with Burt Reynolds. Who? John Boyd. Yeah, John Boyd and Ned Beatty. Uh, <laughs> they came across some... Southern rednecks who didn't like them. And it didn't end well for Ned you know Beatty. Who else was in it? Ron Glass. You know that one? Yeah. My guidance counselor. Yeah. Like well, anyway, this right here is called Banjo Player. It is 32 and a half by 44, oil on canvas. And we had this up for like 24,000, 27,000. It is 2951. I'm going to sell one of these right now. That's it. I'll tell you what. Then I'm going to move on to something else. Because I tell you what. One of these is going to go bye-bye right now. All right. I got four major paintings. Put that one back up because I don't want to compete with customers. If I end up buying it tonight, I'm going to feel guilty for a day. Then go, I offered it to everybody and not feel guilty. That's golden wheat. Slide that over there. <coughs> Call me on any of these, and then I am going to move off of the Oleg's for a little bit, and uh, well, I don't know how we're going to do that. That's okay. I'll rotate them. You'll rotate them? Yeah. <laughs> Call me. I'm going to sell one of these right now. And I just, just get on the line if you want one. It's going to be cheaper than you ever drew. Oh, look at that. I love that face in a face. The story of time. And where's the one where Eve is grabbing the apple, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, give me the one where Eve, Adam's holding her back. Folks, I'm going to make some deals now. Please, if you want an Oleg Javetin, 33 years on TV, I, you can't do any better than the price I'm about to give you. So call me up and it might be under these papers. Yes. Yes. So, folks, last call on Oleg's for a little bit of time here. All right, put that one. 
Here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. There, let me, uh, let me have this Adam and Eve. It is 24 by 18 oil on canvas. It is titled Adam and Eve. Can they see that? Yeah, where should I? We should. I'm, I'm going to create a mess here. So let me just. Yeah, if you could move those over. Yes. Right here. There's an easier way. Let's take this down. This is. Uh, Patty, I'm auctioning this right now. I know I'm crazy. Uh, look at this. Adam and Eve. The whole story. Right there, that apple. And Eve is trying to get the apple and Adam's trying to stop her. Don't bite that apple, Eve. Don't pull that apple off the tree, Eve. That's where evil lies. Don't touch it. Don't play with it. Just leave the apple on the tree. And what would happen, Jimmy? Hunger. Hunger, <laughs> no. She looks in very good shape. What happened? They took the apple off the tree. And the world was never the same. You have anything to do with that, <laughs> Jimmy? All right. All right, this is Eve and the Apple, 2954. Studding work. I'm going to try this one time. If this doesn't work, I don't know. I'm going to blame it on you, Jimmy. Did you have many friends as a kid? Many or any? Any. One. Imaginary or real? Oh, okay. <laughs> imaginary. Okay. Um, Patty, 2500 to open $200 increments. You got the story of the world there. Don't grab that apple, Eve. Don't touch the apple. The Bible didn't say you could play with the apple, did it, Jimmy? I don't think so. It said, leave the apple on the tree. And Adam's trying, someone's trying to grab the apple. Wilson, did you take the apple? You know, all kinds of, all hell broke loose when they, they took that apple off that tree. I'm trying it at 2500 yeah, I've never had an Oleg this cheap. And uh, no open once. I have some Azule here. I got all kinds of stuff. Some Gregory Wilhelmy. Got all kinds of good stuff. But this is, in my humble opinion, no open once. Hey, Matt. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching me on Dish or DirecTV or on the internet, my name is Barry Chapel. This is a Wednesday night art and coin show. We're focusing in on the work of Oleg. He even dropped by to be in the show. Here we have Azure Lays. We have a Peter Max. No, we don't have a Peter Max. That was sold. We have other works, but uh, I want to show you Oleg in his own words. And then I'm going to grab some other stuff to get ready with. Tell me when he's ready. You ready? Take a look at Oleg.
Actually, I live here in the United States about 17 years. Why? Because I was invited to work here. I was invited to work here, and it's a very strange story. People saw my artwork actually on the street. When the uh, when Soviet Union was strong, it was not allowed any private enterprise. I, I start showing my artworks right in the street. And some entrepreneurs, uh, some American Russian entrepreneurs saw my artwork, they invite me here. They invite me here in, in the United States. And I came here in 1990. I didn't speak any language at all, any English. I had zero dollars in my pocket. And this is why that country is great. I start work and I start have success. My subject matter is very simple. Very simple is I paint mostly romantic paintings. I paint appreciations to the good relationship between people. That's it. Most of my paintings, it's a female and male. A male sometimes give her a letter or a flower. She can read the letter or see the beautiful flower. And she can appreciate his honest suggestions to, to her. Very simple. Why I like that? I tell you why. Because I don't want to produce any negativity. It's already so much negativity in our world, in the movies, in the paintings too, in the music. I try to work in that areas, but I don't want to do it anymore. I tell you why. How many years are I going to live? Maybe another 40 years, maybe 30, no more. After all my life I work in, I want to keep some paintings in public. Public going to keep the paintings in their collection as something positive. So people, when they look, they have to have pleasure from, from what they look at. They have to have pleasure. Yes, we have negatives, a lot, a lot of negatives around us. But I believe if we move our attention to more positive, everybody as a society, we're going to have positive. It's simple as this. Uh, through the deep psychology, we as a humans, a lot of us don't have a simple one nature. Everybody, everybody, everybody even simple workmen somewhere in the factory, we all have deep psychological difference, differences even inside us. Each person sometimes can have two or three faces. It doesn't mean that person liar or it doesn't mean that person a bad person. No, no, no. It's a sophistication of our, any human being. Uh, it's a sophistication of our internal psychological depths. It's uh, multidimensional, multidimensional of any human being. Art is uh, one of activities uh, close to the intellectual life of the human beings. Why it's important? I tell you why it's important. Because we are human beings, we are not animals. <laughs> I think the art is the highest expression of human brain in any positions, in literature, music, or visual arts, or Mathematics. Mathematics, the high-end mathematics is art, too. It's very important because we are human beings. It's just one thing what divides us from the rest of animal kingdoms. If tomorrow human beings decided to save that planet, they can save that planet. If tomorrow human beings decided to destroy that planet, they, they can destroy that planet. The difference simple lion or simple monkey or chimpanzee, they cannot do that. Uh, but we are, we are humans, we have tremendous power in our hands. And everything belongs to us, to our decision. Art is just one side of all that intellectual powers. That's why it's important. Human beings can have different pleasures. 
psychological pleasures, pleasures from music, physical pleasures through touch, pleasures from food, pleasures from relationship. And art, it's another area where people can get huge pleasures, tremendous pleasures, especially if you understand. If you can teach yourself how to appreciate art, you can get a lot of a lot of pleasures from it. You can see some beautiful painted details or expression of, on a face or combination of colors or combination of colors and textures. You can have huge pleasure for, for your mind and for your eyes. Enrichment, Enrichment pleasure, it's just pleasure. It's why uh, uh, Medicis in the past, in 15th century, they were not stupid. They pay a lot of money to uh, Raphael or to Michelangelo to paint something good, something good. Because we have such a short time live in this world, the longest life is about 100 years, no more. It's nothing. It's 100 years. Some people live. 50 years, 30, my little brother was killed in a car accident. He died when he was 33. Very young guy. Uh, we have such a short life to spend that, so my, my philosophy, try and enjoy every minute, everything. Try and enjoy every hour. Don't go into any stressful situation. You don't need to. Try and enjoy, try to make your life happy. Try to make your life happy. That's it, this is my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna make a lot of money, it's good. If I don't make a lot of money, I make a little bit of money, or no money at all, it doesn't matter, I have to paint. I just cannot do anything else. Everybody, we're live. I'm Jimmy Gristel. This I can't is. You wrote it. I know. Can you believe it? Hey, hey! I tried to. We locked the door. How'd you get back in? Good to see you. I just met you today, or maybe years ago. Also, uh, I've been hanging around art ever since I met Barry years and years ago. And this one right here, and I've kind of selected even the apple. Yeah, this is. I think this happens to be Barry's favorite, but I, I really like the whole juxtaposition, the whole vibrancy, the whole just really kind of turns me on, you know, equating right back to the original story, right? So how about uh, 2500 to open and $200 bidding increments? Are we good with $200 bidding increments? Hey, I'm a coin guy, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you say there, Patty? Yeah. Are we in? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So. I think one of the reasons why Barry ran that dock of yours, right, was just so because people were like, while it was showing, is that Oleg? It's like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, a little time has passed, right? Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, uh, I've worked with Barry about 20 years, yeah, 18 years. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, I first met him in 94. Oh, I can help you. This is this is a very informal arrangement. Yeah, there yeah. you go. You're good. Yeah, you were saying about 20 years. Yes, I, I know Barry worked with him about 18, 19 years. We go yes. back to 94. Exactly. Yeah. Me and yeah. Barry. So 2,500 to open. You guys need the item number on this 2,954. There it is. And you know, here's what I have to say about these. I've been hanging around the studio now for quite a few days just you know absorbing all of this and the thing about it is in, in everyone they're so intricate that there's something you see different each time you look and something that it says to you each time and that to me you know when I look at art it has to like do something to me and it just lasts forever something you want to keep forever so that's how I feel about this uh, painting oh and by the way one of the things that I really found impressive was every one of these 
has been done especially for primetime shopping by you? Every every one of these. Well, or nearly everyone, not, right? Not exactly. I just paint. I, I don't think when I paint, when I take a absolutely new canvas, it's white. Sometimes I paint in black and start on black canvas, mm -hmm. mostly on white canvas. I don't think, oh, let me paint for that people, or let me paint for that people. No, no, no. I just paint. I don't know how to explain. I, I, sure. I, I paint from when I was like five years old. So 55 years I paint, paint, and make some drawings. I really don't uh, aim. Okay, I'll uh, accept that. Yeah, the right. painting. But for me, I'm going to think that you did it just well, for us. Well. Okay? <laughs> uh, just, you just let me have my little fun. All right? So 2,500. And then we're going to move along. If, you know, so why don't, Barry, you're running around back here somewhere, right? You guys pick out another one for me. And since we have you here, to, to me, this is like getting the designer of a coin to come down uh, to the studio and talk about their work. So I'm impressed. So, but since you happen to be the man who painted all of these, I like this one right here. Um, have we featured this one uh, uh, much today? Because I, well, really yeah, I really find it captivating and it kind of sends me as well. This is 2956, The Admirer. And for all you collectors out there, because many of you who have been watching Barry Chapel for years and years and years, know what you, you know, you know much more about art than I do. So I think what we need to do is kind of turn the tables, have the audience really control the show right now. 2956 is the item number. And uh, Barry? Yes. If this was a perfect world, and you could, as a gift, where would you start this at? As an auction? Or yes. Or oh is it just, a, just an, uh, an open, or you give us a call? Well, at the bottom of the screen, it's going to say call for prices. Right. But many, many times over 18 years, I would have started something like this at 3800 to 4200 It would have gone to six or 6500 well, see, it shows you what I know, right? Because I was going to say seven grand. Okay. Man, I love that man's face and how Oleg said he is a substantial, maybe millionaire. She is oh. intrigued now. Right. There's something about her that she goes, yeah, he's growing on me. Well, it's just my fantasy. It's like uh, <laughs> maybe when I paint, I, I fantasize. I thought, oh, this is me. <laughs> And when, sure. when I approach that beautiful lady, uh, maybe I, I, I think, oh. I'll go with that. Exactly, with that. exactly. Look so here. what do you think? $4,500? Yeah, well, well, on the bottom of the screen, it says call for price. Okay. Yeah. All right. We might even be able to do a little cheaper than that if they call. All right. Well, you, and what we want to do here, and, and I will tell you this, what I've gathered from uh, hanging around you guys for the last couple of hours this gentleman here is extremely modest. He, 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 he he's, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not talking about you. Uh, yeah, extremely modest. And I, you know, and I realize that I've known a few artists here and there and they really kind of downplay their talent and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and maybe that's not for you because you've been painting for so long that you, you know where it's at. But I'm impressed with a painting like this. And if you want to own this, the, the best way that you can do this, thank you, Patty is to give us a ring, yeah. is to give us a call. And what I'm going to do is suggest the next one, just because I think it is so important. I think Oleg nailed this one. A story that is, starts in BCE, yeah, the Garden of Eden. Jim, no, stay up there, Jimmy, I'm going to. I'll be right back. I'm well, really actually, easy. it's a much earlier than B.C. Yeah. When you read the Old Testament, it's day one. Uh, it's probably four thousand years before the Jesus time. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's Adam and Eve grabbing the apple. And Adam is trying to stop Eve from grabbing the apple. Please give us a call. And the reason why I say please is because I'm inviting you in. And, and you know, for a guy who does coins all the time, you know, coins to me is art that you can hold in your hand. So I think I have oh, yeah. an appreciation for art. And when you see what it takes to conceive a coin and it starts out as a sketch and what, here you have a blank canvas and bring it to life, it's very much the same. Uh, oh, yeah. I you appreciate know? Any, any kind of uh, um, artist sure. who, let's say, they create design for the money or, or they create design for some <clears throat> stuff what we handle every, every day. And we're so used to that stuff. You don't notice. We, we don't appreciate yeah, anymore. Right. It's like all around that, uh, all that civilization, but actually it's very important. Yeah. It's what uh, what actually uh, stand between us and uh, beasts and animals. Right. We are civilized people. Right. We have to appreciate the art of ancient coins paper money, paintings, sculpting, architecture, anything, sure. anything. Right, I, I, right. Yeah, but as, as, a, as a coin person, I really can't appreciate what it takes to conceive something like this because I've been involved in the process uh, for coins. And, and so really they're one and the same to me. It's an art form. Uh, it's a different it, art form. It's a different yeah. art form, exactly. Yes. So, yes. and this is a, a really wonderful piece, you know. When I and I think I look because I think I might have mentioned earlier one of your pieces was very vibrant, and obviously every one of your pieces are electric, you know. Uh, you get that feeling with all the the different angles, the shapes, colors, uh, the continents on the faces. Uh, just, you know, it's a style that's unique that I've, I've never seen quite like anybody else. You do it like that. Well, I just uh, try to create something original, something uh, what uh, belongs just to me, not, not that. Because sure. you can see hundreds and hundreds of landscapes absolutely similar. Absolutely similar. Like... For example, about 10 years, 15 years ago was very popular Mr. Kincaid. Yeah. He used to paint uh, landscapes. Sure. And after him, it's like a hundreds, hundreds different artists start to repeat all that uh, story about little house yeah. on a pound and a little forest here. Uh, yeah, it was a style that they exactly. thought worked. It's, it's kind of boring. Why yeah. I have to paint like this? Right, right. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I this just, is anything but boring, yeah, that is this, for sure. I want to paint something more alive, more like what's touch me, what, what's, what's, what's my desires. You know, I have, this may seem like the most ignorant of all questions, but when you approach a canvas like this, do you, do you have any idea what you're going to do? Do you have a thought of... Or do you just... Oh, every time it's different. Sometimes I, uh, I feel like paint something, to create something. And I don't know what I, what I want to. Mm -hmm. So I just start put it on a canvas, absolutely abstract lines. Mm -hmm. And about one, two hours later, when I see through that lines, triangulars, I start seeing some figures, some faces, mm -hmm. some story right and when i see the human beings be behind that abstract it, story come to me right away it's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a theatrical play right away it's what it is it's a subject it's a story behind them sometimes it works in one way sometimes i already know for sure i want to paint that situation that situation i don't know how it's mm -hmm. appeared in my brain do you dream know. like this i'm sorry do you dream like this i mean you must you know when because... i sleep I dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well sometimes i don't know it's hard to explain 
Because, you know, everyone has these thoughts before you drift off well, that run through, that I, race through your mind, Exactly. Right? But I dream about females and girls when I'm much more younger than now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd like to be your age, okay? So. Well, well, now I'm 60, but uh, I don't know. It's it's. Uh, no, because to me, like obviously, I have no talent when it comes uh, see, to. Now I dream like not this. about girls when I'm 60. Now I dream more about difference between red and blue, some lines maybe. Mm -hmm. Some some situation inside the canvas, some mood what canvas can create. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's it's more more professional stuff. Right. Like. Uh, right. So really, when you start, you really don't really know how it's going to end up. Yes. Yeah, sometimes. Yes. Yes. Right. And I yeah. and that's what I find so amazing yeah. about art is that it really comes through from the heart to the hand, you know, uh, and not and not so much scripted, so to speak, yeah, you know, yeah. not so much planned. And to be able to do that, that's where, to me, that's so difficult to do. It comes natural oh, to you because you're, difficult. God gave it's, you the talent. It's not difficult. I just take canvas and uh, well, that's why. small size like that or much larger. And a lot of times I don't know what I want to paint. I just feel like I want to paint, oh, and I just start with charcoal or pencils, do some uh, absolutely abstract, like Kandinsky sure. uh, thing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, put on a canvas. And uh, when about one hour, two hours later, I already see the whole paintings coming together. I don't want to stop on a Kandinsky level. You know who is Kandinsky? Yes. It's a father of abstract right. painting. He used to live in Russia and Europe in the beginning of 20th century. Mm -hmm. he, well, the, the art critics tell, tell for us, tell us, everybody, Mr. Kandinsky was the father of abstract paintings. Right, right. So, and I want to go a little bit further than Kandinsky. Why? Because I appreciate the realistic life too. Mm -hmm. So I want to mix all the styles together. Let's say it's some some shapes, triangulars, some abstract stuff. But same time, I can see faces and humans behind it. Th they approach to me, so I paint them. They approach to me. F f f it's like a movie. I like when I do that, I create my own screen, my own movies. No, that's kind of what I'm trying to bring out. What I'm, uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure you don't really need me for this, but, uh, you know, I, I'm speaking to you, Barry. Um, you know, but it's kind of interesting for me to get an idea of how you go from the very first stroke to this, you know, and what it takes to get you there. So, um, and again, from my point of view, I see the art every day in numismatics, so I, I can clearly see uh, the beauty and the thought and the feeling. That's really what art's all about, right? The emotion that it stirs in you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick another bear. <laughs> I'm coming up. I'm just looking. Like... You got to give me a call because there's a rookie up here right now and you really want to take advantage of this guy. It's like, you know, no, really, it's like bringing somebody up from the minors, right, and throwing them in against Sandy Koufax and saying, go ahead, get a hit, right? Or, you know, so that's what you got right here. You got a babe in the woods and you got a master and uh, you got Mr. Chapel here. Uh, uh, doing research. I'm trying to yeah. find uh, no, hey, um, you're doing can research. I have my mic back? Oh, is the, yeah, I suppose you can. <laughs> Thank you. I was trying to find a picture of the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, Russia. They had a 12 foot painting by Matisse. Yeah. Very famous painting called yeah. The Dance. Yeah, and they're yeah, holding yeah, hands. Oh, yeah, very famous. Yes, everybody yes. knows that painting. Yeah. There were guards there, but they didn't care. They were 
This is 2012, 2011. They didn't care. I mean, they look, but they don't care. So I touched the painting. And I got a picture of me touching it. Uh-huh. And it moved. And I, I that's when I went, uh-oh. <laughs> but uh, art, this is beautiful. Now, folks, call me. If you ever wanted a deal on an Oleg Javet, and I think he is one of the top artists I have ever sold in 33 years. I was 29 when I came on TV for the first time. And I cannot believe that people, this to me, for being a, this is one of my favorite paintings. And we're going to move Adam and Eve. Don't touch that apple, Eve. Isn't that all that they said in Genesis in the Bible? Don't touch the apple. Isn't that in the Bible? Adam and Eve, the apple, and Adam, and then all hell breaks loose? Well, it's just a very nice old story, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, but this is called Hidden Desires. It is 21 by 24. 2957. Oleg has been so modest. I have prices from Art Brokerage, and I know the person. He's a customer of ours. He sent me a picture of this hanging in his house. A long vertical painting, uh, untitled Man and Woman, 1997. It was on Art Brokerage for 68800 That's a masterpiece. And what you're too modest is this is a masterpiece oh look you got faces in faces she has her eye closed he has a face she has a face and a face and what is what is she saying in this well again as i explained earlier i start whole painting with absolutely abstract lines uh geometrical forms and uh I finished to put in some two pretty much realistic yes. faces right in the center. Why? Because human beings obviously more important than just lines yes. and triangles. And what's the dilemma, the face in the face? What's going on here, you think? It's no dilemma. No dilemma? No dilemma. They just... Uh, 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 they just... Uh, appreciate each other company that's it yeah it's a it's a simple yeah it's very simple they feel good together I got he you. Is, he's not hesitated to approach her and she likes it she likes she relax yes. she relax she's um, almost meditate she she let him to approach uh, her it's uh, they're both happy that's it it's yeah, well, it's the whole it's story. Hidden desire, but is there some desire? Because we titled this Hidden Desire. Does he. Uh, is there something there? Is there a spark? Well, in normal man, it's always hidden desire. <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. You are right. Hey, Jimmy, what did you do with my favorite? There it is. Let's put up that painting. I'm going to sell this one right now. Because I want it too much. No, no, turn around. Right there. I was ta- I want this painting too much, Oleg. That's not good. My friend Bob Hallam, who owns Stockton Coin and Jewelry, told me 33 years ago, never compete with your customers. Because I bought a coin from him and it didn't sell. And I said, well, I'm going to just... Keep it myself, and Bob said, never do that. Jimmy, I want this painting too much, so I got to sell it. I could buy this from Oleg. I could buy it from Jack. I could do this, but this is one of the single greatest Olegs ever. And what I can do, I got a price in mind. If you have watched the art show, me on Dish, or if you watch me at my old company, the was in Torrance, or if you see me any time. I started off, Oleg, wearing a hat that said Bargain Berry. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> Bargain Berry Shopping Network. Now 
I am still just Barry, but this is the best deal in art on the planet right now on this April day in 2024. This should be $100,000. There's no doubt in my mind this painting is a $100,000 painting. I want it too much. Call Patty. Patty, I'm going to make a deal on this painting. Yeah, just call me. Oleg, you got so many things happening. The hand gesture, the wheat, bread, food, life, that stare. Look at that. What does he want out of this whole deal? Well, the, the, <laughs> the everything uh, you can read uh, right on his face. He's, uh, he's absolutely in love with her. Okay. You can see the little little reddish on his cheek, mm -hmm. and little uh, look at his eyes. He's uh, he's look at her. Yeah. Like uh, you can tell absolutely. Uh, uh, he he look at her with the hope. This is item number two nine four nine, and I am going to sell this tonight. I'm going to sell this right now. And I was looking on my phone for a picture of the nice customer. This is a large painting, and you go up some stairs, and you see it, and it's just gorgeous. This is the same caliber. This is one of the greatest Oleg Javetins I have ever had on TV, period. And my problem is I want it too much, and I can't buy it. It would not be fair. I'd be competing with my customers. Patty, someone's going to call. I can feel it right now. I can feel it. Someone is saying, Barry, I believe you're right. This is an amazing Oleg. It might be Mr. W. It might be Mr. M. It might be Mrs. K. It might be Joaquin. I had not bought anything from me in a while. They just, this is a perfect Oleg. Everything you could ever want from a master graduate of the Surikov. I believe it's called the Russian Academy of the Surikov, right? Is that what's the name of that? Is it the Russian Academy or Art School of the Surikov? Well, they the organized that, uh, that uh, academy uh, back in, in the beginning of the 20th century. Yeah. <clears throat> so, back then they call it not Russian, but Soviet uh, <coughs> in institution. <yes. coughs> it was called not not the Russian art college. Yeah. It was called uh, uh, just a art college. That's it, because it's already inside the Soviet Union. I got you. Yeah. So. Uh, <coughs> Well, you know, get highest Soviet offer, Union start has... calling. Someone's going to own this. Highest offer, start calling us. Whoever's got it is going to get this because I don't have much time left. And um, and Oleg, it was, um, you were telling me about uh, Vasily Ivanov Surikov. Who is your favorite Russian painter? If you had to say, I know you like Kandinsky. Who, who else do you like? Well, from classical styles, I th I believe the most valuable and important painter is Ilya Repin, not Surikov. <laughs> Ilya Repin. Uh, you can find it through internet. Okay. And uh, they call it after him the Academy in Saint Petersburg. Okay. Ilya Repin, the Academy, yeah. Exactly. By Ilya Repin in St. Petersburg. In Moscow, it's a uh, uh, Surikov. Okay. Yeah. It's a two major colleges for art, fine arts. I in, spent in, three weeks uh, in, uh, in walking the Soviet around, Union. <coughs> uh, walking around the uh, <coughs> college in St. Petersburg. Well, yeah, Ilya Repin, if you take and look at his paintings, 
He is the greatest artist of 19th century. Wow. He is uh, on a level probably of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Now, da Vinci's got to be, I mean, the Last Supper that he composed, Leonardo? Oh, yes. yes that's... Well, well that's... so, but later was uh, begin the modernistic yes. styles. Yes. And in modernistic styles, uh, people like Kandinsky yes. or, or Van Gogh in the West, in uh, Europe. Yes. Yeah, Borg oh. again in, in Europe. Or Mr. Chagall in Russia. Yeah. Now, don't get me in trouble because I think the Statue of Limitations is up. But when I was at the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, I touched five different Vincent Van Goghs. Well, you could be arrested. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I think the Statue of Limitations, but I touched them. What, which one are they interested in, Patty? Um, on this one, we're verifying. Yeah, well, yeah, let's see. Let's make a deal. I know we had up for 20-something, but I'm going to take, I'm going to sell it so cheap right now. If you want, this is my favorite painting. Patty, if I don't sell it, I'm going to make a deal with Oleg, and Jack's going to get mad at me. So I can't buy this from Oleg. i got to buy it from Jack if Jack wants to sell it to me. But this is my favorite Oleg. This is, color-wise, one of the most incredible Oleg Javetin originals I have ever seen, including the Three Graces. Yeah, I got twenty-seven or 29000 for that on Art and Coin. I took it off my wall. And I'm going, and my daughter at the time, she's now grown up, she's 22. She's so tall, holy, she is. But she said, Dad, I grew up with that painting. I said, yeah, well, I'm selling it. <laughs> and what are they saying? Because I'm going to make a deal on this. Who do you have on the line, Patty? All right, because that might do it. If, if what I just showed you, it's so cheap. I'm doing that so I don't buy it from Oleg and get myself in trouble with Jack. Cause this, this is a great, look at these wheat. Look at that. Have you ever tried to make beer? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> Yes. It's sold? Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Patty, do they want Oleg to write anything on the back? This is soul. Yeah. And Patty, if they want Oleg to endorse it or personalize it on the back, he can do it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's All right, that is gone. Now, pick that. This one right here is absolutely mind boggling. Yes. Now, folks, thank you. And who, what customer got that? Uh, yeah, put, put that one up, Jimmy. Yes. There you go. This is one of the most unique ones because it's a story of time. A love triangle. I'm just going to put that back over there, yeah. Look at this. This beautiful girl. Jimmy, she's gorgeous. She's beautiful. But she's thinking about this guy. But the problem, Jimmy, the problem, the problem since the beginning of time, the problem since Adam and Eve and Eve grabbed that apple. The problem is he's thinking about her and she's thinking about him. It's unrequited love. Un? Unrequited love. Unrequited love. Requited love, yes. Unrequited. Yes. Could you word, spell that for me? Return. Could you spell that? Could you? R-E-Q-U-I-E-T-Y. All right, I don't know. I can't spell. <laughs> This is called Love Story. It's 48 by 36. It's oil on canvas. I believe this painting's worth over $100,000, but every time I say that, only gets mad, even though I have comps for 104000 But who cares? 
I got a price in mind for this. Patty? Yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Have you ever been caught in one of these situations, Patty? No. Is that you, Patty? No. Thinking about him, no. but she's mad because he was thinking about her. Yes. What do you call that? A recorded? Unrequited love. Unrequited. Requited, not returned, right? Without, the feeling is a mutual. Yes. On one or the other party. So, on this right here, call me up. I got a price. Oh, this is item number 2948. And folks, you are getting deals, unbelievable deals. This is called Love Story. I'm sure, Juliet, after you did in Romeo, oh, you did him in, yeah, we know where you buried him. Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, Wilson... She said that she got the idea after she watched um, De Niro, in Wise Guys. Yeah. But anyway, this is an amazing painting. Call me up. Patty, I got a price for you on this. Uh. All right. If they are interested in this, give Patty a call. All right, let me, I'm going to put up one more. The banjo player. Yeah. You don't have a mic, but it's all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Here we go. Twenty-nine fifty-one. Twenty-nine fifty-one. Oh. You know what? I really started to want to go on TV, I was 20, and my dad's college friend had his own TV show. It was Bob Wilkins' Late Night Creature Feature, and he was on for 30 years in the Bay Area in Oakland. He, he would have the killer tomatoes and everything else. Was he down in L.A. also? No, I don't know, but he... Oh, that was, yes. So Bob Wilkins invited me over to his Oakland set, and I was just amazed. And he would have all these, uh, he loved the killer tomatoes, you know, and he, he would talk about the film, and then the tomato, building up steam. Yes, so what we got right here, is absolutely amazing. It's a banjo player. It is 32 and a half by 44. And uh, call Patty, call us, make offers, give us a call. I'm gonna try and sell as many as I can. Uh, I love Love Story. They're all fantastic pieces. And we were so fortunate to have Oleg come on TV tonight. I can't believe no one's bought Adam and Eve. Well. If I'd done an awful, did I besmirch the story? Oh, not too much. No. <laughs> not too much. <laughs> That's like one of the biggest stories in. I think there was a movie made about it. <laughs> yeah. Didn't they write a book? Yeah. All right. I'm going to put it up one last time, and then I got to be 
Oh, we got about a few minutes left, but here, move that over and call us. Just make offers. Give us a call. I think this is one of the most interesting pieces. It's not, it's, it's by far not one of the most expensive. It's called 2954. And did you see that movie, uh, Cash, when, uh, who played the piano so well? He recently died. Oh, come on. He, who's one of the greatest piano players of all time? Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, when Jerry Lee Lewis was riding in the back of the car with, oh, Johnny Cash. yeah, the Johnny Cash movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he and he says to Johnny Cash, the Bible said didn't say you could touch it, the Bible didn't say you should play with it, the Bible said don't touch the apple, and here Eve's getting ready to grab it, and Adam's holding his hand, saying don't touch that. What do you think the Bible said about it? Did you ever read the Bible much? Uh, much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is 2954 and it's not going to be that much. You grab the apple. Don't you tell me that, Juliet. Don't be acting so like, hey, what? You grab that apple. You took, you took an apple to uh, George Washington's cherry tree. Yeah, oh yes. Patty, she touched the apple, didn't she? With Romeo. You said, oh, Romeo, please, I'm hungry, grab that apple. And Romeo said, Juliet, I can't grab that apple. And you said, you better grab that apple. And Romeo said, no, I don't. And then, Tom Hanks, let Wilson float away. And that's the history of the world. All right, anybody on this? Because it's going to be a lot. Uh, I got a price in mind for this. Patty, it's so cheap. You're not going to believe it. It is so cheap. Don't pass out. You keep passing out on me. Is that because of the prices? The prices, you can stop it. All right, I'm just checking. So, all right, let me see uh, one other Oleg I'm going to uh, call up some requests here. Folks, uh, I want to come to a shot here and uh, this is the last night we're going to have these Olegs. So, and, yeah, and Wilson, let me see if I can not get this. Uh, if you're just tuning in on DISH or DirecTV or live streaming, my name's Barry Chappell. This is a Wednesday night art show. Jimmy Gerstel also sells coins on Wednesday night, but with gold, it's been tough getting coins. It's been tough bidding at prices we're happy with. So uh, Jimmy's helping me tonight. We had Oleg Javet on the show live, master graduate of the Surikov. He uh, um, was born in Uzbekistan, 2,000 miles from Uzbekistan to Moscow. And when he was a kid in Uzbekistan school, the Soviets saw him as an artist, as a, a student that had tremendous potential and sent him to special schools. These are great. Call me and just let me know. I'm working deals, but this is the last showing of any of these Oleg's. And I was so fortunate. This is no, you got to hold it right there on top of that. Got it. Don't move. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm moving over here. Hang on. Uh, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving, um, I'm off.
and yeah, happy family. Handle it with Patty or Ashley. Uh, they're the ones that got the, the understanding of the prices. Oh, here's happy family right here. This one, right, Patty? Okay. Yeah. And I'll take this one. That's why I was saying if they could come up a little bit, they can have it, but uh, I don't know which prices they're comparing it to. All right, and there's happy family, and whatever they say. Okay, on these call, because we are down to about 32 minutes, and I thank everybody that's watched us. I can, I can hold that with my third arm. Can, really? How do you see it? <laughs> I don't know if I want to see your third arm. <laughs> Don't show me your third arm. That's not, the, not what I wanted you to say either. <laughs> All right. Jimmy, here, say something. I'm going to be back in two minutes. Okay, here, I'm going to strap this on you. Upside down. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hey, live TV guys. I've, I've had I, once the ceiling fell in. You might have even been there when we were doing a live show. So anything's possible. You got to you got to roll with the punches. It's just I wish somebody would actually punch me. It would be so much better. Uh, I got it. We're good. So it's offer time, folks. There's just about a half an hour left, about 31 minutes or so by the clock on the old uh, tripod there. Uh, I haven't seen a clock in this place that works yet or, or, is, or close to being on time, right? It's like everyone is off. It's like, right, you know? Synchronize uh, your watches, folks. Uh, not here. <clears throat> but in all seriousness, please call me uh, because, like I said, you know, you got the rookie here, so I, I'm putty in your hands, or right, right, Patty, putty in your hands, hands in your putty, whatever it is. Uh, let's have some fun for the last half an hour. I I hang around here a lot lately, and I watch Jack's show uh, the last half an hour, and it's uh, it's pretty insane, you know. You sure you don't want to put anything else up here? I think I might be able to balance one on top of my head. No, uh, I have one right here. Too. Okay, yeah, don't take me seriously, but. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I can make this work. I'm sure you can. No, I can't. All right, <laughs> lift that up. Now. Thank you. Actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to put all these back. As, okay. And if you have any questions about hallway. You realize you're not wearing a mic at the moment, right? Yes. Uh, can I have my. And, folks, this is the last showing of the Oleg's. They are all. Did you say goodbye to uh, Oleg? No. Did he leave? I, he me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, each his own. Say what? Uh, no, he did not take the mic. <laughs> he did, but it's not. <laughs> so this is the last showing 
of Oleg's, and I am so grateful he came here tonight to tell the insight of what's going on. And do you, do you think I made him uncomfortable with asking him all those questions? Because as a novice, that's kind of what I thought. No, those are great questions. You know. I, I am always fascinated when Oleg tells me uh, stories about how, how hard the school was. I mean, that to date, and I got to double check this, to date, only one American has ever got a degree from the Surikov. Wow. Only one. And uh, so, here, I'm just going to put these back here. You call me up, let me know, and uh, I'm going to slide that over there, and I am going to take the Garden of Eden. Don't touch that apple. Now, I don't mind if you keep feeding them to me so I can rotate them in and get them in so everybody can take their last looks and really yes. about what they want to do. This one, careful. love story. Uh, well, yeah, let's uh, let's rotate. I got three more over here. Sure, I can help you. Yeah. Jimmy, I saw a demonstration of what live shopping is going to look like in about three years, two and a half years. It's freaking amazing. It puts you right there. This right here, I think the, this one, the blue lady, you got this whole thing going on, the face in the face. She is something from the past that Oleg was explaining, reflections. These are oil on paper. Just give us some calls. That is, and she's got the crown. Yes. And got to get online for these. Yes. Anya, we're down to about twenty minutes, twenty-five minutes, and folks, give us a call. We'll work deals. We, we got a few left, and, uh, and if you've never bought an Oleg Javetin, I highly recommend it. Oleg Javetin was handled by Collector's Editions. They were one of the premier galleries on the, on the continent, and uh, Collector's Editions would take a painting like this, Jimmy, and they get $100,000 for it, 70, 80, 100,000. And there was a backlog. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get that. And they'd wait. And so to have all these hand-painted original oil on canvas by Oleg Javetin, it's just amazing. So we each have a mic. Yeah. Where'd you get your mic? Sure, the mic fairy. <laughs> you got to be careful of that mic fairy. Yeah. Wilson, have you ever had any dealings with the mic fairy? Oh, they, he treats you. I don't like know you. if I believe him, to be honest with you, because <laughs> like I got the mic from him. He, he acts like he's your friend. And then, whoosh, <laughs> the mic fairy strikes again. Well, folks, call us. And I'll tell you what, because I got 25 minutes left. Matt, how long is Oleg one? Whatever we paid, played oil, Oleg two. Let's play that last one, because it's going to be the last Oleg show for a long time. Which one? Uh, it's ten minutes. I do it because they're not. Yeah, and call while you're watching this. This is it for Oleg's. Here we go.
My name is Oleg Zhvetin. I was born in the former Soviet Union. I was born in a small town close to Tashkent city. Tashkent is a pretty big city in Central Asia. It used to be part of Soviet Empire. But when I was grow up, I never knew all of, all of that stuff. I just grew up. When I was grow up, uh, I don't know the difference between socialism or communism or capitalism or anything else, all that political crap. I just grew up as a little boy, that's it. I, I just grew up, I love uh, to see flowers, nature, play Indians, actually we play American Indians. <laughs> My earliest memories, I just uh, love to draw. I, I draw on the furniture, on the walls, uh, on the paper. If I have a piece of paper, I, I just draw. My family, we have three kids. I used to have sister older than me and brother um, younger than me. My father is a simple engineer. Actually, he was chief engineer in the furniture factory. And uh, we have simple life. I'm thanks, thankful to my parents because they was educated actually behind their, their limits, behind what they need to know in their lives. We have a great library, great library. So I, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot of American artists, American writers too. And I, I was just a simple boy, just read a little bit. Uh, the, the important probably we don't have much TV. That time, Soviet Union, Russia at the time, we had just three channels was controlled by government. And we have just a simple corny movies, probably not much news because they don't show news at all. Here in the United States, uh, people always stressful. Why? Because they always see the horrible news. Somebody killed here, somebody uh, has a drug overdose, somebody got a uh, car accident, terrorism here, terrorism here. Always stressful news. Back in Soviet times, no, no, no. Even if Russia has some kind of trouble like this, they never show on TV. They never show on TV. They, they always show positive news. Like, let's say, uh, that farmer got thousands uh, more cows, and that's it. <laughs> the whole news like this. <laughs> If I couldn't paint, uh, I have to make somehow my living. I don't know. I would be probably homeless. But, uh, I cannot do anything else. I cannot do any. Uh, my early age, when I was like 17 years old, and I was in uh, art school, but I cannot make any money from my art. My father was chief engineer in furniture factory. So uh, one time I came to him and I told to him, look, I, I have to make some extra money for my clothes, for my girlfriends were, he said, okay, you can go in my factory and work as a simple blue color fa factory workman. And you can make maybe about 200, 300 bucks a month. And I try did that. I, I go to the factory and work about three months. And it was so hard and it's, uh, <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. It's not because it's hard labor. Uh, I, I'm not afraid hard labor. It's, uh, what uh, stopped me to do it anything, I start to understand I don't like it. I just don't like it, I start to understand I have to stick what I like. What I, I like to paint and that's it. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna be an artist. But I joined the Surikov Art Institute called Vasily Surikov Art Institute when I was um, um, 20 or 21. It's very, very difficult school to get into. Why? I tell you why. Because in Soviet times, to join that school, a lot of, a lot of competition to join that school. Why? Because it's, uh, let's say, just, let's say, take huge megapolis like Moscow. 10 million people live in Moscow. And uh, in Moscow, we have probably two or three schools high-end like this, no more. And 200 million people in country. 
And let's say how many thousands of artists who want to join and to be an artist and get that high, uh, high and excellent education. Thousands of people. So when you go to there, you, you have to show your artworks. You have to show your skills, your education, and you have to pass it through examination. So when you compete, uh, you, you, you have to take some tests in art, in, in uh, drawings, in composition, in paint, in uh, art history, in uh, language, in a uh, little bit in philosophy. And every test, you have, you have to have excellent grades. If you don't have excellent grades, you just lose. That's it, because school has to choose uh, the, the most excellent person to study. Uh, you have to show real paintings, not photographs, not for portfolio, real paintings. Uh, so I, I, I take my paintings, I put them in a train, put myself in a train, travel three days, it's a big, Russia is a very big country. So from south to Damascus, I travel about three days in a train, uh, take some taxis, so show the paintings, real paintings to the persons who are reliable, who make making decisions. So they can allow it to put you compete. A lot of guys show the paintings, it doesn't matter. They, they can see the paintings and they say, no, no, we cannot accept you. We cannot accept you even to try compete. So first step, you have to show the paintings and they can see the paintings and probably they can see some potential inside. Uh, they can say, yes, we can allow you to start competition. In Russia, in Soviet times, artists cannot paint even human being or any cityscape or landscape or any nature. It was against uh, religious rules. Simply, I can have consequences. For example, if I paint something like I paint now in Russia, back in Russia, I could be arrested. It's simple as this. Why? Because I don't paint some stupid portraits of some proletarian guys or some party propaganda. Uh, what they actually tell you to paint. A KGB guy come to you and say, okay, you have to paint here Lenin or here some Karl Marx and here some revolutionary guards or whatever. And uh, of course, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, I paint it. And they paint, they got their salary, and that's it. But if you don't do it, you don't paint, you paint something else, you, it, very simple. They can arrest you, they can abuse you in jail, torture. It's very simple like this. Can spend, let's say, 10, seven years just for nothing, for saying something, or paint some paintings, or create some music what doesn't suit to the music of communistic taste. I just have to change my situation around me so I don't want to go to prison. Why? Because I want to paint certain paintings. It's simple as this. So I moved to the United States, and amazingly, I never was arrested for my paintings. <laughs> Even more, I was appreciated. Here, public start like my paintings. Hi, Barry Chapel, back with you. We are down to the last 20 minutes of the show. Call up, make offers. These are the last showings of these Oleks. They're never going to be on the network again. So we had only come here personally. We have some large ones left. We have one of my favorites right here, Eve and the Apple. Anything you've seen, give us a call on because this is the last time. Hey, Jimmy, can you move? Oh, let me, let me, let's move that one out of the way. Love story. Yeah. And here, I'm going to put this up here. I thought this was one of the most interesting ones of the night. It's very, it's not very large. It's called Even the Apple 2954. And can you get a picture? Is that too high up? That's too high up. You want me to take this off? Uh, put or it on the bottom. Yeah, and then we can 
else at this right there. We have one that I thought was uh, amazing. This is Oleg Javetin, Master Graduate of the Surikov in Moscow, the hardest art college, if you ask me, in the world. To date, I believe only one American has ever graduated. It's unbelievable talent. And this is the last showing of all of these. This is amazing. This is called the Banjo Player. And Oleg Javetin doing Russian Romanticism using all the different shapes, whether it's triangles, circles, planes, squares. They are all in there. And they are just call. I mean, we have incredible deals. And once again, this is the last showing of the Oleks. And so call me. Let me know. Uh, yeah, in a minute. Yeah. Patty, which one of these three that I got here is your favorite? Oh. I think the banjo. You like the banjo? I love music. Yes. Yes. This banjo player. Have you ever played the banjo, Oli? My grandfather. Your grandfather? Yeah. <laughs> and he's still alive. <laughs> oh, I thought you said he's 91. Oh, oh that's yeah, when you... The, the, it's uh, my other grandfather from my father's side. He used to play a banjo. Oh. <laughs> and in Uzbekistan? Yes. Actually, what's so funny about him, he actually uh, uh, worked for government oh. in a very, very high position. Oh. He's, a, uh, he's a helper of the Secretary of Finance, the whole Uzbekistan. Oh, the Secretary of Finance. Yeah, very high level bureaucrat. Like the Treasury Secretary, yes. Yes, very high level bureaucrat. And he has a huge house, mansion, nine bedrooms personal driver and um, the security huh. even when he's retired even, even after he retired. retired and what's so funny that uh, Uzbekistan is hot hot like, like a desert like Palm Spring mm. very hot so he's staying in his underwear and <laughs> t-shirts and playing banjo it's kind of funny <laughs> can you imagine six days playing in his underwear and t-shirts and just playing banjo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a catchy instrument. That, that's how I go to the grocery store. <laughs> Synthesize completely. So this is available. It is item 2951. You have, uh, that is amazing. Oleg explained that painting many times. And this is even the apple. And the only other one we have yeah, grab that one and uh, you want me to. yeah. Here, look, let's put this one on or near the easel. Here no, comes. Let's put this one up on the easel. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Less than ten minutes left, or about ten minutes left. I got that right, Wilson. I don't know. That clock is all messed yeah, up. Yeah, I'm looking at that clock mm -hmm. going. Yeah. Jimmy, it's 429 in the afternoon. <laughs> well, in that case, give us a call. There's really, really limited time left. And this is the last showing of these Oleg's. 14 minutes left, Jimmy. Okay. Oleg, what else have I not said that you said? What else would you say to people out here? Come on back up here, Oleg. You signed a painting. Well, uh, well it's much more easy for me just to answer some questions if you have any questions. Yeah, if you have any questions, there's Oleg right there. I have one for you. Yes. Do you ever get tired of painting? When I'm tired, I just go to bed. No, I mean just in general. <laughs> have you ever said, no more, I'm never going to paint again? Oh, no. No. I cannot live without that. It's, uh, That's what I was kind of looking for you no, no, to no, say. No, 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 I cannot do anything else. It's just if I stop painting, I would die. <laughs> just, that's it. It's, because it's my pleasure. Yes. It's not just my uh, uh, income. It's your income. pleasure. Yeah, yes. income is pretty good, but it's my pl everyday pleasure. I just uh, playing. I love to mix paint. I love to draw. I love to 
it's just uh, what I do for the last 50 years, so I can't stop now. So you started painting when you were 10 or no, young? No, maybe five. Do you remember the first painting that was really good? Maybe you were 10 or 8, you go, wow. No. No? No. When even I, I try, I remember I was when like about 10 years old and <clears throat> Uh, I was joining school for art, for kids who love paint, and uh, they tell us, the teacher tells, okay, draw something, some story from your family. <laughs> and my grandfather, from my mother's side, he was in the war, Second World War, when it was the United States and uh, Russia was... Uh, Allies. Allies, yes. exactly, yeah. So, he, back then he was helped to cook for 3,000 soldiers, right in the field, right when his bombs fall down. He's so, cooking. it was when I was small kids, you know, the boys always impressed with the guns and, and sh war mm. and all that stuff. So, I tried to paint it my grandfather, Standing behind the tanks, behind the airplanes, cooking. Yeah, exactly, try to cook <laughs> for like soldiers. This is a, it's what I remember clearly when I was like ten years old. Uh, well, it's just one memory. Oh, well, it's a fantastic memory, ladies and gentlemen. We are coming to the end of this Wednesday night uh, art show. We have four or five Oleg Javetins left, master graduate of the Surikov in Ma Moscow. Now, you're both an American citizen and a Russian citizen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Do you prefer one over the other? No, sir. I, I prefer don't talk about politics at all, but, <laughs> but I prefer our two greatest nation on the planet Earth would be friends again. Yes. This is my dream. This is I pray for. It's no reason. It's absolutely no reason Isn't for the fight, yeah. Americans and Russians to be an enemy. It's like no no reason at all. Got an offer? Yes, I have Susan. She's interested in the enemy. Yes. I'm going to. Oh, Susan, you need this. But Susan, if I sell this to you, don't play with the apple, Susan. Don't take the apple off the tree. Please keep calling because time is a running out. Ten minutes. And it is, it's amazing. Would you have played with the apple if you were in the garden well, of the... If I, I would start playing with Eve for sure. You play with Eve. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, and Eve is definitely gorgeous. Gotta say, I think he got it right. <laughs> you play with Eve. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, let me hold this to you. Oh, okay. I can't leave it with Jimmy. You'll play with the apple. I'd hang it on my wall, that's for sure. Thank you, Susan. So Adam and Eve, or the, the Garden of Eden, or, is still available, and it is a fantastic painting. I, I hope you don't mind my saying, Barry, that if you folks have been watching this, basically the, this exhibition of Oleg's work, yes. please give us a call, because the, these don't last forever. And this is, this this is, is showing. it going. is the yes. time now. It's been showcased. Uh, fantastically with the artist himself. Not much else to say about that. Huh? I've known Oleg for 18 years now. 
Yeah, and he's, he calmed down. And you guys are still friends, him. which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> what was that joke, Jimmy? Yeah, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, folks, I thank you. And uh, let me just, that is a funky clock you got there, Wilson. It is. It doesn't tell normal time. It's very funky. I should have known when it had the number 13. I should have known when he took it <laughs> off his wrist. <laughs> yeah. Like, what time does that clock say right now? Uh, it's time for the dentist. It's 2.30. <laughs> well, folks, thank you. If there is an Oleg you want, please call. Uh, and I thank you. This, they are all beautiful. They have been a fraction of the, the price. And this is the last night you're going to get a chance to see him. So thank you. And Oleg, I want to always thank you for stopping yeah. by. My and pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, how cold is it in Moscow right now? It's not cold, is it? No, it's a springtime now. It's about uh, plus two Celsius. Which plus is? two, plus five. Celsius, I don't know Fahrenheit. Hey, Jimmy, what is plus five Celsius? <laughs> maybe I'm a Fahrenheit guy. Uh, Come on. Yeah, maybe <laughs> let, let me say maybe about seventy. Uh, Sixteen plus Fahrenheit. Uh, hang on. This is a real test. Siri, what is sixteen plus Celsius? No five. Here's what plus. I found. Okay, forget that. Siri, what does 5 Celsius equal in Fahrenheit? Flight, plus. 41 degrees. 41. Are you sure, Siri? That's springtime, huh? Yeah. Springtime. Wow. No wonder, you moved, snow, no wonder you moved out here. Snow melt yeah. already. Because a couple times, Siri, you lied to me. You just straight out lied. Wilson. How much time exactly left? Because <laughs> seven minutes. Six. Folks, okay, six. Six minutes to go. Please don't miss this opportunity. Get online. We have, we have operators here who just and are we are taking at the incredible bit. offers. I mean, way below market. And uh, this one right here, the banjo player. And... Uh, that other one, uh, Love Story, is still available. When you were growing up, did you ever, in Uzbekistan or in Moscow, see American movies? Always. Yeah, what was your favorite? Uh, as a kid, Did it, was it like, yeah, you can pull up Love Story. <laughs> Raquel dinosaur, Welsh. Exactly. Raquel Welsh. With, yeah. uh, with dinosaurs. Yeah. And they use it huge, huge iguana. As a <laughs> <laughs> huge iguana and, as, as a dinosaur. Should we put it up here? Sure, take that one yeah. down. Yeah. Hold this one. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and another very fun movie, I remember. <laughs> remember. It's American made. Uh, Sinbad and uh, Special effects of the day, yeah, claymation. Clay monsters. Yeah. <laughs> clay monsters. Oh, it's great, great movies. <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing piece. This is called Love Story. It's 48 by 36. It, uh, she is thinking about him. But he is thinking about her. A classic, what do you call it? I, I called it unrequited love. A love triangle. People can get hurt with that. Always. Only Always. If, yeah. Only if they're lucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, the, the relationship between, it's the most important in our lives. 
Exactly. If only I had to realize that earlier, right? <laughs> No, I'm serious. <laughs> Love the color on this. Well, folks, thank you. Any last offers, just call Patty, call Juliet. She might even tell you where she buried Romeo. Just, uh, yeah, she was married to a guy named Romeo. Oli? And Romeo, tsk, nobody knows where he is. Who? Juliet's husband, Romeo. She was really married to a guy named Romeo. He's gone. Yes. She said something about... I concreted over him. Oh. <laughs> yes. Folks, uh, time is just about to I run out. Thank Don't all of you. miss a deal. And Jimmy, are you going to be back? You got some coins for next week, you think? Boy, I hope so. <laughs> okay. And I want to thank everybody. No, we are working on some good stuff. Well, thank you. And any last calls, questions, offers? And uh, thank you. And the people that bought stuff tonight, we're going to get it to you very quickly. And um, Patty, whoever bought that one, that was one of the greatest Oleg's I've ever seen. What was the title of that one? Golden Wheat. Golden Wheat, yes. Oh, that was a great piece. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Anything you want to tell people, Jimmy? Any confessions you have to make? Uh, no, but I will tell you this. Um, you know, some of the best deals happen in the last couple of minutes. So uh, don't waste a minute of the time that's left. We only got 120 seconds left. You, go, you know what I could do at 120 seconds? What? <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> well, you know, now, folks, if you're watching us in China right now. No, we're upside down there. So, in other words, Jimmy, can you turn that painting upside I, down? I wish I could. No, no, just seriously, watch. Uh, yeah. Uh, for our Chinese viewers. I got a better idea. Viewers. Stand on your head and then I'll no. give it to you. For the Chinese viewers, now it looks normal in China. You didn't know that about TV? Uh, yeah, well, I've only been to China once. <laughs> What's that? In Australia, not in China. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, yes. Because they walk upside Exactly. Down. <laughs> One minute. One minute. I can feel it. I don't know if we're going to get a call. Patty, you think we're going to get a call the last minute? I know we are. See, when she does that, I don't know if that means one collar, but she's using not her index finger there, Jimmy. Does she do that with you? It's not her ring finger or her pinky or her thumb. Hmm. I Does wonder she... what it could mean. <laughs> I don't either. Uh, 30 seconds. You know 30 seconds. When I was 18, I tried hitchhiking places, and somebody pulled over, Oleg. They, they pulled over and beat the heck out of me. Oh. And then they told me I used the wrong finger. <laughs> Instead of my thumb, that was actually, I was that was actually funny. the wrong finger. We're almost out of time, folks. <laughs> Don't miss a chance. Less than 10 seconds. Say good night, Barry. What can you do? With? Good night, Barry. What can you do in 10 seconds? Thanks for watching, you? folks. Thank you. Bye. So Kingdom Fuel is 